Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my weekly deck reviews. I am excited because today marks the beginning of a very thematic December and I will be telling you more about that in just a moment. But first, let's talk about what weekly deck reviews are, is, are, weekly deck reviews is. Somebody grammar down below. I think it's weekly deck reviews is all about. Okay. I can get the whole sentence out. We'll be we'll be doing good. So I like to share with you guys what I have been working with for the past week and what I'm going to be working with next week. That's it in a nutshell. I change this up a bit here and there, but for the most part I work with one tarot deck and one oracle deck and one Lenormand deck um, each week, although I rotate my Lenormand deck right now monthly and I'm also working with runes. So I didn't bring my runes to show because I've been working with the same set for quite a while, so check out a previous weekly deck reviews video to learn more about those. But let's get into decks. Let's talk about what I was working with last week. So I have been working with my Shadowscapes Tarot. This is by Stephanie Pumin Law and Barbara Moore is the writer of the guidebook. Okay, here's the thing. So this is the backs. I've etched mine in lavender and these are the fronts. I think this artwork is gorgeous. I think this artwork needs to be three times the size that it is for me to really be able to sink into it and appreciate it. The borders aren't really entirely the issue for me, it's that the artwork is so fine and so detailed that I just don't feel like it lends itself right to this format. And I don't know why that is because I know there are other decks with very detailed artwork that don't leave me feeling like this. It's a very con... There's a card way over there and I'm not going to die for it just yet. But there is um, a lot of feedback from people about this deck needing to be larger, needing to be matte, needing to be borderless. I know that there is a Czech version, I believe, that you can sometimes find, I want to say on like eBay, that is bigger um, and is gilded. But part of the problem I have with this deck is that I feel like the artwork is exactly my style. It's dreamy, it's beautiful, it's watercolory, I believe. Um, it's, it should be a beautiful deck for just being pulled right in one of my favorite Queen of Cups. But what I find instead happens is I feel like I can't get to it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but the artwork feels distant to me, almost like I'm watching it on a screen or something or on a card, but I'm not able to sink into it. And as stunning as it is, it feels too far away. And I don't know how else to express that. Like these are beautiful. Like this artwork is absolutely breathtaking. I've seen, um, there's an art book about this deck and you can see these really big images and they're so different when they're big. And it's almost like they just, as much as I, I think they're beautiful for tarot and the meanings are beautifully represented in the cards, I just feel like I can't connect. And it makes me a little bit bananas. Now this is one of those decks that I will never, re I should never say never, but I have no plans to ever remove it from my collection. This was a gift from my kids and it was a Mother's Day gift. It was the only deck that they've ever gifted me that I can remember. Doesn't mean they haven't done it. It just means I can't remember. Um, maybe this one was memorable because it was the first. I don't know, but it's got, so it's got associations for me that way, but it's just not a deck I feel like I enjoy working with as much as I want to, as much as I want to love it because it's so breathtakingly beautiful and I still remember all the hype when I found out this deck was coming out and which is why I asked for it when I was asked for gift ideas for Mother's Day but it just it feels so distant and I can't get past that I can't leave that card on the floor one moment I couldn't <laughs> I just couldn't okay so here's the outcome I'm going to retire this deck so I'm going to be um Probably, I, I, at some point, I'm going to rearrange these hanging racks so that I have a rack for retired decks, which are decks that I don't plan to work with, but I'm not ready to let go of for one reason or another. This deck's definitely in that category, which is a bummer. Maybe that'll change in the future, but it's just, it's not changing, and I've tried a few times. Um, this deck was actually published in 2014, so this is the first edition that I have, um, and I think it's really, really good. I think the guidebook is really beautifully and dreamily written. Like it so fits, the writing style so fits the theme of these. I mean, I even wish that we had full color images in the book like Llewellyn is doing now. I think that might might go a long way towards making it a little easier to sink into. 
it's very fey. It's very dreamy. I mean, I keep saying those words, but there's something about it that's not letting me come in. I feel kind of like, like I'm looking at it through a window or like I said, it just feels kind of disconnected. I, I wish there was a better way to express it than that, but it's stunning. <laughs> I've looked at calendars with this artwork and I've seen it in bigger formats and it's just, it's so beautiful. It's just too small. It's like it needs to be jumbo sized and borderless and matte. I don't know. We will see. I mean, there's been enough feedback about this that I feel like Llewellyn may eventually reprint this in a larger size, and then I will wait and see if I feel differently about it then. But for now, it's retiring. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> so the Oracle deck that I've been working with this week is the Sacred Destiny Oracle deck by Denise Lynn. Holy moly. Is this... What? What? Yeah, it's Hay House. This is probably this deck and... Animal Kin Oracle, or was Animal Kin Rockpool? Now I can't remember. My favorite, I'm pretty sure actually Animal Kin was Hay House too. Yeah, yes it was. So this one and Animal Kin Oracle are my favorites by Hay House. Um, they did this right, like they, this is what bothers me. Side rant, companies, publishing companies, the ones that like sometimes get it like really, really right and then sometimes so, so wrong is so frustrating because we know they can do it because we've seen them do it um but hay house lately has been putting out more decks in this style so really nice sturdy two-piece box it's deck sized the book is deck sized and fits inside the box the book is really lovely about this deck and i will get into that again a little bit more in just a second here but let's look at the cards oh and the inside of the box i love it when they put little like easter egg things on the inside of the box so this one says is it focusing i can't tell Sacred, oh, just a Sacred Destiny Oracle. And then the lid is also this really pretty night sky. I think that's a really nice touch. The backs of this card are, or the, this deck are everything. They're so beautiful. I love me an ocean scene, so I'm all about that. This deck is based on sort of sacred landscape and nature. And it is so gentle and loving and beautiful and potent. I really really enjoyed working with this it was definitely it definitely stole the show for me this week the cards are not photographs but have this photorealistic quality to the artwork that just is so gorgeous and powerful the keywords are really really good i felt like i didn't need the guidebook but i thoroughly enjoyed working with the guidebook which i'm going to talk about now so the way that the guidebook is written really was not something that i expected but i really enjoyed I don't know if I mentioned it last week or not. I don't think I did. But for every card, you would have a description of the land. Let me do one that's on two pages so it's easier for you to see what I mean. Oh, are none of them on? Yeah, here's one. Okay. So you'd have a thumbnail of the image, and then you'd have a description of sort of the landscape. So in this card, which is patience, the landscape or the the nature element is dense fog so it's there's a write-up here about dense fog and it it ties it in with the keyword so it says for dense fog and patience the key oh, it's right up here in big text <laughs> i'm like looking really close to read on the thumbnail but it was like right up here anyway it says water represents our emotions our feelings our subconscious and our nocturnal dreams when the water becomes condensed as fog we can't see clearly Fog occurs when the air is cooled to the point at which it cannot hold all the water vapor it contains. Thus, it condenses water vapor where it is suspend suspended in the air as fog. We can't see what's ahead, and things that look one way in the fog will look another way in the light. However, when you can't perceive what's on the horizon in life, your imagination can surge forward and your sixth sense can be ignited. And then it says the sacred landscape wants you to know, and this is sort of your message. In dense fog, it's best to be quiet and still. For now, don't go forward. Wait, it's hard to see what lies ahead and things may not be as they seem. Things that seem one way may in fact be completely different. Be patient, the truth will emerge. In this state of obscured visibility, your imagination and intuition can be sparked. Um, if you can wait long enough, your dreams and inner yearnings can come to fruition. Listen to your intuition and pay attention to those seemingly random thoughts. Now, guidebook-wise, this is perfect for me. There's like a bit about the artwork that ties it in with the message so you can kind of draw your own conclusions. And then there's a sort of plainly written message that also connects to what you see on the card. What bothers me is when I get guidebooks with Oracle decks and they don't address the artwork at all. So they'll explain the keyword, but you're like, yeah, okay, I get the keyword, but how does that tie in with the artwork? 
and this does a really really masterful job of doing that it makes this deck really easy to work with it lets you dive a little deeper and all the messages I got felt very grounded um, psychologically relevant emotionally relevant and spiritually relevant so it pretty much ticks all my boxes that way I really really love this and it's so stunningly beautiful to look at I think the last time I felt this taken away by Oracle Deck artwork was probably my Messages from the Light Oracle Deck, which had that similar kind of breathtaking quality to it, but a very different art style. Anyway, loved this. Highly recommend this. If you are on the fence, check it out. And I think Hay House at least recently was having a sale, so it might be worth checking out right now if they have any copies available. And I don't know if this deck is on sale, but Hay House was having a sale for sure. So that's my thoughts on that. The reading cloth I was using this last week worked so beautifully with these decks and it is this really pretty purple and gray butterflies. I use this side like every single day. So pretty. Um, it worked really good with the softer colors and the shadowscapes especially. And yeah, so that was good. I really enjoyed using that. I love all my reading cloths and I like to rotate them so they all get some love and I, I have more coming because I have a Peggy and she's making pretty things. Um, in fact, I'm filming this the night because she, the night she just put up new cloths in her shop. Peggy's Etsy shop is always linked down below. She makes all of the bags that hold all of my decks <laughs> and she makes all my reading cloths, the quilt that I'm sitting on and all kinds of other goodies. So um, she just put up two mega reading cloths. I don't know if they'll be still in her shop by the time this video goes up tomorrow morning, but they're giant and they have unicorns. Did I mention they're giant? They're so pretty. Anyway, I can't wait. Okay, sidetracked again. The Oracle deck, sorry, the Lenormand deck that I've been working with for November was the Claire de Lune Lenormand by Anna Turian. This is back available in her Etsy shop now, I believe. It comes in a tuck box now instead of the little tin, but it's exactly the same as far as I know. This is a really beautiful Lenormand deck and I definitely enjoyed working with it this month. I would say this is one of my favorites. Working with it with an entire month, my, for an entire month, my opinion changed ever so slightly and that is just that I love this aesthetic when I'm in the mood for this aesthetic, which is this sort of beautiful cast by moonlight kind of artwork. It's absolutely stunning. Over time throughout the month, I did start to miss color, especially when I had this next to my more colorful tarot and oracle decks. Um, it started to look too dark to me over time, but I don't usually, um, when it comes to just like picking an, a Lenormand deck for a reading, this is always one of the first ones I reach for because the images are very clear. They're easy to see what they are to me. They're very potent. Um, I don't feel confused looking at them. And they do look beautiful in large spread. Like if you do like a grand tableau or a mini tableau or a nine card with this, it looks really, really good. So I enjoyed working with this this month, but I was ready to move on to color. But I'm a big color kind of junkie. I feel like if I worked with any deck that was more um, smaller color palette over time, I would have the same feeling because I'm just a color junkie. So love this deck. It's still one of my very, very favorite Lenormand decks ever, but ready for a change. <laughs> so that's the Claire de Lune Lenormand by uh, Anna Turian, and I believe it is up in her Etsy shop. And the Sacred Destiny, I, I mentioned how to get that. Um, Shadowscapes is a Llewellyn deck. You can still get that mass market on like Amazon or anywhere I believe it's still commonly available. Let's talk about December and themes and all kind of fun things. So a couple months ago I decided that for December I wanted to do a month of working with whimsical and fairy tale type decks. So I picked a fun fairy tale type deck to work with every single week in December and I'm really excited to have that as kind of a theme to carry me through the fun festive season um, and I'm just really excited. So the first one I'm going to be working with is my last unicorn tarot that took so long to get to me but is finally here. Um, so I'm not gonna be carting it around in its beautiful carved wooden box but I had to show it off just anyways because it really is a really nice box. It's got a scene from the last unicorn on it and it's just it's really beautifully engraved. It's a very lightweight box. I don't know what kind of wood this would be called. Maybe balsam. It's very lightweight. And it doesn't have a strong woody smell, but it does have like a little padded compartment for the cards. I did oh, get a Peggy bag for it. Um, so I'm gonna be carrying my deck. It was open because I was just playing with the cards, but in this Peggy bag. So this is one of Peggy's standards bags. Standards? 
standard bags. Um, this is what it's embroidered with. It's this really beautiful moon and cloud design. It's so pretty and again whimsical. Um, she just embroidered up another one of these. It's not done, like it's not on her shop yet, but it's glow-in-the-dark thread. It's like on black with like a baby blue glow-in-the-dark. Oh, it's so pretty. Anyway, but mine is purple and I love mine. But anyway, <laughs> and she gave me this bag ages ago, but I finally had something to match to put in it. So the Last Unicorn Tarot comes with this really nice like sort of vegan leather um, guidebook. And the cards are a little bit larger than standard with all this beautiful gold accenting and they're really matte rose petal finish. I'm really excited to work with this, not gonna lie. Um, I did a full flip through and I geeked right out on this movie. If you haven't movie slash book slash deck, if you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it up in the cards for you because I kind of lose my mind a little bit about every single card so you can see me be a total nerd about The Last Unicorn if you watch that. But I'm excited to finally see how it plays and reads for me this week so super stoked to be working with that and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pumped not gonna lie. So that's going around with me this week to do my daily draws and any readings I want to do for myself personally that is my main go-to tarot deck for the week. And I decided to pair it with something a little bit simple because I wanted the focus to be on the tarot deck this week. And I haven't worked with this in a while and it is the Universe Has Your Back. Um, I wouldn't call these oracle cards, I would call these affirmation cards. So they're very much a deck full of positive messages. There is a new deck out now by Gabrielle Bernstein in the same style and I think it's called... Af uh, nope, I can't remember the name of it. But there's another one out. It's got a very similar backing, but a different design. And it's also a Gabrielle Bernstein deck. The deck, the cards felt like they were the same size and the same art style. But this deck is full of just really positive, uplifting kind of messages. And I thought this would just be a really nice thing to pair with my The Last Unicorn Tarot because I feel like it'll support the deck and give me a little something extra for my readings but it won't steal the show and I really don't want anything stealing the show this week because I want to focus on that tarot deck so that's what I'm going to be working with beside it. The reading cloth that I've chosen to work with this week shouldn't come as any surprise probably at all and it's my fun rainbow unicorn cloth. Um, I love this one. I've worked with it recently as well but it's also got this really nice dark purple and this morning um, I was playing around with these and the dark purple looks so good underneath the last unicorn tarot so I kind of geeked out on that a little bit too. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be working with this week for a reading cloth and finally because it's a new month I have a new Lenormand deck and it fits, sorry I had to fold this cloth while I was talking to you because I'm me. This is so perfect for the theme for the month and it is the fairy tale Lenormand. This is by Arwen Lynch and Lisa Hunt. And I'm really excited. This one comes in a tin. I will say, I don't know that I would recommend this as your very first ever Lenormand deck because the artwork is a little bit busier. Um, and you really don't need the fairy tale themes to work with Lenormand because for Lenormand, you really just want to focus on what the card is about. But I think this month I'm going to play with the themes and just see if they add anything to the reading, how they add to the reading because I have worked with this deck before but never for any sustained length of time so working with it for a whole month I should have a chance to really get to know it and see what I think about weaving in the fairy tales to the meaning of the cards and we'll see if that helps or hinders my Lenormand reading but I typically read Lenormand in one to three card pulls for the most part well not one like two to three card pulls I don't usually do single cards um, sometimes I'll do a nine card grid or I'll do like a five card um, like in a row with yeah sometimes I'll do that so we'll see we'll see how this works out it does come with a chunky little guidebook which is really nice actually um, and that tells you a little bit about the it has like the keywords for the card and then it has a little bit about the, the story that is associated with that particular card and it seems to tie in the story with the Lenormand meaning for the cards. So I'm excited to kind of play with this. I love that it comes in a tin and that it's all compact and together like this. So love that. Really excited. So I think, is that it? I feel like that's it. Oh, my bedtime deck is still the Dreams of Gaia. So I'm still working with pulling a card once every night, most nights, and reading the hefty guidebook entry. I put it in this... Um, 
card holder. I usually light the candle because it's a little bit dim at nighttime and I like let the light flicker off the image while I read the guidebook entry and that's been really, really nice. So I've been enjoying that. I don't think I'm gonna change that anytime soon because I'm really enjoying working with the Dreams of Gaia that way. All right, so that about wraps it up, which is good because I've been going on for 20 minutes. <laughs> but thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will see you again very, very soon. Remember my 21 days of Yule starts today, so watch for that video in your feed because it will be up real soon if you haven't seen it yet. And that will be going on every single day from December 1st through the 21st. I'm really excited about it and I can't wait for all of your feedback. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Be sure and let me know down below what decks you are working with right now, what you're loving, what you're not loving, all that good stuff. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye.